do you guys know about health savings account? Or for short, HSA. If you know about this, comment below. If you do not, comment below. I just found out about this about maybe a little over a week ago. Um, what I do in my finances is I will search the internet and I will look for new financial concepts that are out there. I look for things that I have no idea about, something that I can learn so I can stay up to date with the whole financial industry, like who's doing what, right? And I came across some YouTubers talking about HSA. I'm like, all right, what the heck is this HSA thing? So I took a bunch of notes because I'm, I'm learning about it myself. And I recently just uh, acquired an HSA. So a health savings account. Um, I'm just going to literally write down what I wrote because I really don't know how to explain it. It's just, there's, it's so much. So the first thing is we're just going to go right into the benefits. It's a triple tax benefit. So you have a triple tax benefit. This account is used for medical expenses, medical purchases. And you have the ability to store money in this account every single year. You don't lose the money. You can use it whenever you want for your medical bills, right? So you have this triple tax benefit where the money that you dump in is pre-taxed dollars. So that is a taxable deduction off your income because it's pre-taxed dollars going in. And then the money in the HSA can be used tax-free to pay for your medical bills. And then the money can actually grow tax-free, uh, tax-deferred in the HSA account. The limit to how much money you can put in this HSA is $3,500 if you're single. If you're married in 2019, it's $7,000. I was looking at the previous years. It looks like it goes up by 50 bucks every single year. That's what it looks like. Looks like it goes up by uh, 50 bucks because in 2018, the limit was 3,450. And for married, it was uh, 6,900. And then the year before that, it was 3400 I think, in 2017. So it looks like it's just going up by 50 bucks every year. We're at the end of 2019. So I'm assuming going into 2020 that the limit will be 3550 And for married, it'll be 7100 more than likely. Um, let's see. So in order to be eligible for an HSA account, you must have a high deductible. And I think there's a, a short term for this. I think it's high deductible health plan. So it's called HDHP, high deductible health plan. So you must have that in order to be eligible for an HSA. And the your deductible has to be, I think, over $1,300 or maybe $1,400 or more has to be your deductible. I personally have a deductible that's 5,000, so I know I qualify. Um, let's see, I wrote before, pre-tax contributions. That's the first part. And then the money goes in Tax deferred. That's the second part of it. Um, and then 
here's what I like. Because I didn't hear too many guys talking about this on YouTube. But you can self-direct your HSA. What does that mean? You are in, if you self-direct, say, for example, a IRA, a Roth, um, like those qualified retirement plans, when you self-direct it, you put yourself in control of where that money gets invested. So with HSA, I can self-direct it and I can invest in things like cryptocurrency, Forex market, real estate, maybe some angel investing. I don't know. Uh, but I know the real estate part and the cryptocurrency and the Forex, I know that's true. I don't know about angel investing, like investing in companies or maybe a franchise or something like that. But boy, that would be cool if that's possible. So you can self-direct it. All right. And for me personally, I want to invest in real estate, like without a doubt, because I, I have a community that I've been a part of for quite some time now, and I have a deal going on with them. It's a, it's a simple fix and flip. Um, I'm, a, I'm on the rehab side of it where I'm investing $10,000 for a 20% return. That's, you know, that's really great. So with a self-directed HSA, you know, you start out with a couple thousand, but then over time you, you grow it, you know, each and every year. Um, let's see, the next thing. So I can use the money, right? Here's the, the next part is I can use it tax-free. <clears throat> for medical. And then the last piece of information is something happens after age 65. I wasn't, I wasn't sure. I didn't verify this, guys. But, you know, like I said, I'm learning. And as I learn, I just put information out. And then, you know, I refine it. But let's say you started at whatever age you're at right now. And then once you hit 65, I believe that you can start actually getting retirement income from this HSA. I don't know if it'll be tax-free income, right? Because it did grow tax-deferred, and it can only be tax-free from medical expenses, but something happens after age 65 where I think you have to start taking distributions from that HSA, and that money might be taxed. But shoot, it grew tax-free the whole freaking time. So... That's awesome. Um, let's see. So where do you get an HSA? Because there's a bunch of different HSA providers. So I was looking that up. I'm like, all right. HSA sounds really cool. Has a lot of benefits. This is, you know, no one knows about this. This is, you know, very, very low key. Everyone has, everybody has a flexible spending accounts and you know different types of medical stuff but man i've never heard anyone talking about health savings account what the heck so i found um a couple different providers hsa bank was pretty popular amongst youtubers that are talking about hsa the next one is lively i Denzel personally have an HSA that I just started with Lively. It has no monthly fees. So that made me go with that. Because <laughs> I'm like, all right, if I don't have to pay for it, then that's great. Other providers have like a monthly fee just to have the account. So I was like, eh, I don't know if I like that. Uh, the other one is called HSA Authority. what I found and then health equity is another one and I think that was it those are the only ones that I found that but the big youtubers were talking about uh, HSA 
So I thought that was really cool, guys. This, this is something to look into, right? So this is on top of your velocity banking strategy, your infinite banking strategy, your kingdom strategy. Here is another vehicle where I can put money safely, have it grow, tax deferred, and use for medical, right? So now let's actually put some numbers to the test here. So I went over all the benefits and I'm sure there's more information that I did not cover, but this is what I grabbed from other YouTube channels. This is what I was able to compile together and make sense of. And so now we're gonna go into the actual strategy in terms of how do I fund this thing. And we're going to incorporate velocity banking, infinite banking, kingdom, cash value collateral loans, and HSA. We're gonna, we're gonna put all of this information together now. All right? So, the first thing is, and I'll use, I'll use my scenario to display this. So I have an IBC policy. I'm gonna use Guardian as the example. I go to a bank and get a cash value collateral loan and that is now going to be a business line of credit, simple interest, revolving, open-ended, low interest rate. I can write off the interest on that loan. Meanwhile, my money sits and grow tax-free. The next step is part of the loan that I got from the bank. I take 3500 I'm single, right? Well, no, not really. I'm in a relationship, but I'm not married. <laughs> uh, so on paper, I have to write single. So 3500 I had to be I had to be careful with that because you know people on the internet be like oh Denzel single mm. <laughs> so thirty five hundred is the limit for single individuals. I'm gonna fund my HSA with debt, right? And then I'm going to self direct it have to learn how to do that. Don't know how to do it yet, but I'm going to self-direct it. And the goal is to invest in real estate. But to start things off, I might put it with like so it can start growing initially because I still don't have a ton of knowledge on real estate yet, so I'm I'm still on the learning curve. So in the meantime, I could probably go with a brokerage I could probably go with a broker and invest in a couple of like maybe ETFs and some different stocks or something like that and maybe earn like six to seven percent return, right? Probably more than that. Six to seven percent or more return on the 3500 So I have my original money. Look at, look at this, guys. You have to pay attention. Check this out. Original money is here, capital is here in the life insurance policy. I have my death benefit, I have my cash value, I have my tax-free dividends, 5.85%. That's money being used one time. Here's money being used a second time. That same money is getting collateralized by a business loan. I then take that money that I just now is being used twice and I borrow against it 3,500 bucks to fund an HSA. That's a third use. I then take that 3,500 self-directed and invest. That is a fourth use. One, two, three, four times using the same dollar. How is that possible, guys? I don't know, it's 2019. Anything's possible now, <laughs> right? So we funded the HSA. I'm gonna have that money sit and grow. 
I'm not going to touch it. With an HSA, the way you can use it is I can either option one, throw the 3500 in there, have it grow, pull from it to pay my medical expenses for the year, or I can use other money so I can use more money. If I took 3500 I threw it over there, I'm not going to use it. This is how I'm going to use my HSA. Not going to use it. I'm going to take more money out from my cash value collateral loan to pay my medical bills. To pay medical bills. And then, here's what we got to do. I'm going to save all the receipts. How do you spell receipts? R-E-C. Dang. Help me out, Josh. <laughs> R-E-C-I-E. E-I. P-T-S. Jeez. I comes before E. E becomes before I. How does it go? With the vowels. A-E-I-O-U. Right? A-E-A-E-I. Yeah, E-I. E, become, e comes for I every time. You got to remember that. So you save receipts. You got to <laughs> Sheesh. Freaking rich people. So you got to save receipts um, throughout the whole year. Option one is I can either reimburse myself at the end of the year on my taxes for those medical bills or option two. I can save the receipts and not reimburse myself, continue to pay the bills, the medical bills, every single year, all throughout my 20s, 30s, 40s, everything, right? Have the money continue to sit and grow. And I have to create a spreadsheet. I'd be very, very organized and keep the receipts forever. I'm going to use it as retirement income later on in life. Hmm. Right? So I can re, R E I, reimburse myself in the later years. Right? So, because check this out there's no time limit as to when I can reimburse myself for these medical bills. So I got money growing tax deferred and of that money, a portion of that can get used for medical bills. And as long as I save the receipts, I can reimburse myself, let's say 30, 40 years down the road. God knows how much money we spend on medical bills. The older you get, the more expensive things get, the more procedures you gotta go and do, right? So it, things just get more and more expensive. So if you're saving all the receipts throughout your whole entire life and you're paying out of pocket now for medical expenses, when you go to reimburse yourself, that's tax-free income, technically. Like I, that's like a distribution that you can get tax-free. So maybe I don't tap into that till I'm like 65 years old or 59 years old. I'm 23 right now. 33, 43, 50. 53, 33, 40 years, 63, let's say I tap into it 40 years from now. When I'm gray hair, hunched over a little bit, you know, or maybe I'm still in good shape, who knows? Um, I can use all those receipts and start tapping into it <clears throat> and reimbursing myself as a sh stream of income. This is super cool, guys. So, That'll be the strategy. Hey, in the meantime, right, each year I'm getting a deduction, right? Let me write this down. I'm getting a deduction on the 35 each year for my taxes. 
I think that's how that works. So someone will have to correct me on that. So I have to. So I think I get a deduction on the thirty-five hundred that I put in. Saved. I I pay my medical bills. I continue to pay my medical bills with other money, right? So this separate. I'm separating the money now, and I get a deduction later on this money. So this money, I'll deduct as a reimbursement as income later on as passive income. Meanwhile, I get the deduction today on the 35. Oh my God. And, and to make this even sweeter, to make this even sweeter, before I use that other money that I took out of the cash value collateral loan, before I use that cash, before I take money out of the account, guess what guys? I'm gonna use a 0% credit card offer that has cash back, right? Maybe two to three percent cash back or more, who knows? And so I can get a little extra money back by running my medical bills through a credit card. And then I pull from the cash value loan and pay the credit card off in full before getting charged interest. So I'm making money here. I'm making money here. I'm making money here. I'm getting reimbursed uh, a deduction here. I'm getting reimbursed here later on. Oh my. How, whoa, whoa, whoa. How many times are we using the same dollar? Ready? One, two, three, four. And then five, and then we got six, and then this is seven to pay back six. What the heck? That's freaking rich people move right here. All right. So, um, Key Perry says after 65, it's like a Roth IRA. Interesting. So are you saying, Perry, that after 65, all of the money is tax-free income distribution? Is that how that works? I didn't think so. I'm thinking I have to pay taxes on some of that at some point in time. Um, but So that would be the strategy. This is how I'm going to use my HSA. And this is exactly what I did. Like... I just funded it the 3500 for for 2019 so that's going to be a tax deduction on my 2019 taxes. And then going into 2020 for the new year I'll dump another 3550 in and I'll have 7 plus thousand to work with. And then I'll start investing it. Oh man. Um let's see. Is there anything else I wanted to mention? with this. So I had a I, I, I was watching this one YouTube video where he his number was two hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. He said that's how much we spend on medical bills over the course of maybe X amount of years I guess that's what he was getting at. So imagine if you stored the 275 over the course of so many years for your medical bills and stored it in a tax deferred or tax free account and then you can use it as income later on. How powerful would that be, right? Um, and it's only gonna get worse as you get older. It's only gonna get worse. You're gonna start breaking down, things start falling apart. You know, medical bills get more and more expensive. God forbid you get in a car accident, right? Isn't that a medical expense? You have a baby, that's a medical expense for, for wife, right? And then the other thing with the HSA is um, you could have a beneficiary, right? A Benny, for short, beneficiary to pay for, uh, to continue to, to have the HSA active, I th think. I know that if you have, I know that if you're married and let's say something happens to you, then your spouse gets to keep that HSA 
and use it for herself. And then she can continue to uh, fund it throughout her years. Or if it was her that passed away, then he would be the beneficiary of that HSA, right? And then um, I know the other thing is that you can send it to your estate, which, you know, I still got to learn about estates and trust and things like that. But how freaking cool is this? I don't know. 